Now here we are with House, my favorite haunted house flick. The film stars the car uh, stars William Cat, Cat, the actor William Cat, I believe, is how you say his name as the, the as the character Roger Cobb. He's fine. He's really good in this film. Uh, this this flick is so much fun. In my opinion, this is Steve Miner's best film, and this is definitely my favorite film he has ever done. Uh, and, and in the film, this uh this guy this uh guy's son disappears, and he was like in the military. Uh, or he used to be in the military, and he goes to the to his like his old house, I believe, or his or the house that his mom was living at. And uh, he and all this fuck like fucked up crazy shit starts happening. But the film at the same time is like more fun than it is scary, and kind of like just like an oddball type film, really. Like the stuff that's happening is more like uh, quirky and just like oh, and just like silly fun than more than it is actually scary. But not to say that there aren't like some really creepy shit there well i wouldn't say it's really creepy but it's like so out there like some of the shit is that happens the head it just comes off as uh, like you thinking uh what the fuck it's like whether you don't know whether to it's just more this film is more entertaining i would say than it is scary but yeah you get you get crazy shit in the film like he goes like through his mirror and it's like hanging on a rope and this fucking skeleton comes flying by and like grabs a shotgun and like shoots the rope and you get other crazy shit like where his old um his old fucking buddy from Vietnam like comes back uh, comes back from the dead. He's like a zombie looking skeleton and like starts beating the shit out of him all, or starts whooping his ass all the time, or uh, and terrorizing him in the house. And you know, you get cra other crazy uh, other crazy fun shit like appliances in the work shed come to life and start flying towards him. And you even get like these little demonic looking dwarf things that try to drag this little baby up the, or a little boy up the chimney, and he has to try to get him back out. This film is highly entertaining. I recommend this to anyone who's a fan of like really quirky, entertaining horror flicks. Uh, I think this film definitely falls under that category. It's not truly, it's not really scary, I would say, but it's really entertaining and it's extremely fun. And it is definitely uh, my favorite haunted house flick, horror wise. That I, I mean, I mean, it's my favorite uh, haunted house flick uh, that I've ever seen, um, just because of the fact it's so fucking entertaining. I just don't think any other horror flick, like Haunted House flies, whether they've been scary or not, has ever come close to being as entertaining as this film is, or at least has ever come close to being as entertaining as this film is for me. Now on to Jack Brooks' Monster Slayer. Now this is another film that I didn't see till I was much older. Um, I really enjoy this film. This film is just was is just a blast for me to watch. It's kind of like a, a throwback to old like B movie style horror films. And it's just fun for me to see, like, the character of Jack Brooks, who's, like, always constantly fucking angry in the film <laughs> because he, uh, just ran off when his family was being attacked by, like, a fucking troll and being murdered by it when he was a little kid. Despite the fact that he was a little kid, he still feels he should have, like, done something to help save his family. And, uh, just that idea alone of, like, a character having, like, fucking, uh, anger problems because of a situation like that, I, I think is actually interesting. And I just, oh, and Robert England makes this movie. Robert England is so fucking funny in this film. Robert England has always had good comic timing and has always been hilarious uh, when he wanted to be or when he played, like, the more comedic version of Freddy. And in this film, he's funny as shit. He's the highlight of the film, Robert England is, just because he's so funny. But Trevor Matthews that plays Jack Brooks is, is also really great as the character Jack Brooks. And I just really like the character of Jack Brooks. He just appeals to me. Uh, you don't see a lot of, like, uh, males... As the heroes in horror films, which uh, I'm fine with the females being heroes, but every now and then I do enjoy seeing a film where the male is is the hero once in a while, and uh, I think Trevor Matthews does great in this film. And uh, the uh, any problems with the film? The film does get a little bit slow uh, up until uh, the end, the ending final, when it uh, really uh, just becomes so much fun with the uh, fucking Jack just like killing a bunch of different monsters with some plumbing equipment and shit and different stuff. It just becomes a blast. And Robert England transforming into like some big giant fat demon creature is just it's just a lot of fun to watch. Uh, this is a film I really wish would get a sequel. I don't know why this film hasn't got a sequel yet. I think that this is a film that could easily have a sequel. And some, a lot of times when I watch horror films, a lot of them are like the originals are like so good they really don't need a sequel. And don't feel like they set up for one. But this film right here is one that I really think could use a sequel. And could definitely lend itself into one. With Jack Brooks taking on another uh, another style monster in the sequel. And, may, and, and possibly having like another horror icon 
kind of like Robert England in this film, maybe Tony Todd or someone else playing a secondary role once again. Uh, I really think you could do more with this character than just this movie right here. Now we're at John Carpenter's Vampires, which is uh, another one of my favorite vampire films. What makes this film so good is James Woods. James Woods and uh, Daniel Baldwin in this film are just fucking great to watch. I just get a blast out of watching them in this film. And the whole like western feel of this film really works for it. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this film is it seems the ending is kind of the ending of the film feels kind of rushed, like they had to hurry up and wrap it up. Which I th I believe the reason why that I heard is because the budget that John Carpenter had for the film actually wound up getting cut, and they had to like in the they had to like rewrite the film to end it more uh, like at a to end the film quick more quickly more quickly than they would have ended it. I guess the film would have been longer had he got to keep the budget that he was supposed to have. So this is kind of like the studio fucking John Carpenter up the ass for this movie, which the studio really fucks John Carpenter like for a hat well has fucked him for a lot of films he's done. He's been fucked over a lot of times. But um as far as this film goes though, just as it is, it's really entertaining to me. Uh I get I just get a blast out watching James Woods. He's just so fucking funny in this film. He's just hilarious and he's just so much fun to watch. And Daniel Baldwin, who's his friend who gets bit by a vampire but doesn't tell James Woods about it and all through the movie he's like fucking burning himself, like burning the wound non stop over and over. Uh, that's just so entertaining, and just their characters, they're kind of assholes, but they're still likable assholes, they're just entertaining to watch, and like, just James Woods' dialogue, like, when he's talking to the lead vampire, and he's like, hey, uh, hey, Valak, how's it, after six, like, after 600 years, how's that dick working, pretty good? And, <laughs> and I'm like, that's so fucking funny, it's just, the dialogue they get is so hilarious, and they're just so entertaining, uh, it's like uh James Woods like is like beating this guy up. He's like beating this uh, character up who's a priest. And after it's after it's over, he's like driving the vehicle with him. He's like uh hey when I was hey, uh when I was kicking the ass back there, did uh, did you get any wood from that? <laughs> this is this movie is just so fucking funny. I'd recommend any. I I think this is I think this film gets a little bit I'm mean, uh of a little bit of too much flack. I know that this film is like regarded as a more is regarded as a decent movie, but I think I think I have heard some people be a little bit too hard on it. I think all in all, it's not as good as it could have been, but I still think it's a very entertaining film, especially with the addition of James Woods and Daniel Baldwin. And I think this is definitely a vampire film that deserves to be watched. And moving on to the Night of the Demons here, uh, I really love this film. This film right here is one of the most fun. Uh, uh, one of the most fun, silliest uh, B movies in the horror genre that I've ever seen. I love this film. It has bad acting and all, but it's still incredibly fun just because the film just has such a fun vibe with it. And the demon effects are done really well. And uh, the character Angela in the film, uh, her great dance to the song Stigmata Mantra uh, is uh, one of the great highlights of the film for me. As are the characters, uh, uh, fucking Stooge and Sal. I, lo I love both these characters. The characters in this film are fun. The acting, yes, is weak by most of the cast, but a, lo a few of them are pretty decent. But the film makes up for any kind of shortcomings like that just by being a lot of fun. And this film also has Linnea Lin Quigley in it, who, uh, once again, looks good and uh, does what is probably the best magic trick I've ever seen with the lipstick trick. <laughs> I love this film just because it's so much fun. Uh, the only kind of little gripes I have with it um, is the fact that it uh, steals a little bit from Evil Dead and with the like a POV of like the the demon in the woods kind of idea. It uh, steals from that and has like the POV of the demon going through the house. But other than that, uh, it's still really good. It's a really fun film. It's just a blast to watch. Just all the way from the silliness of it and just like the really – the film just has like a really fun Halloween vibe to it. It's basically about a bunch of uh, people who are having like a Halloween party in a haunted house. Um, and everything winds up going to shit. And the ending of this film is uh, is hilarious. At the end of the film, you got like this old couple who you've seen at the beginning of the film. And then at the end of it, they're like he, – the, the old man was like putting razor blades in his apples. It's kind of like a wraparound thing. And at the end of it, he's uh, – his wife has actually like – uh, there was like some leftover apples and she has actually cooked them and he had actually ate some in a pie and he fucking like the razor blades just like start coming out of his throat and he starts like bleeding out and he, he starts bleeding out and he falls over 
Uh, the makeup effects in this film are really good, and the uh, special effects in general in this film are good. This is a really fun film. I recommend that anybody who just loves like a a really Halloween feeling type horror, really Halloween feeling type horror films, give this film a try because this film is great. I just get a blast out of this film. I love watching this film on Halloween as well. Uh, not as much as Trick or Treat and Creep Show, but still a pretty good amount. This film is just incredibly fun. This film is just fun. It seems like the filmmakers were just wanting to have uh, fun with this film, which, in a zany film, it takes place on Halloween with a, with a scene where a girl takes a thing of lipstick and sticks it into her breast and causes it to disappear. Uh, that's about all I can ask for is fun. Now here we are stepping back into Clive Barker territory. Uh, this is another one of Clive Barker's films, which I really enjoy. Uh, to be honest, I would rather see a remake of this film than Hellraiser, because I think this film had potential, uh, a lot of potential, as a matter of fact, to to make a really cool like uh, franchise, even a franchise that's kind of. Uh, I mean, this movie has like a comic book feel to it, of like a. It kind of has, like, I mean, it has like a comic book feel to it with all the different monsters and everything, and like the really neat idea of um, of like uh, all the characters and all that, and just like the idea of like a big monster community. I don't know, it just has like a really comic book quality to it, and each one of the monsters kind of like with their own abilities. And I think this franchise, I mean, I, I think this film really had potential to become a really good franchise. That uh, I think this was kind of a missed opportunity, and I've heard the film was butchered by the studio. Uh, and that uh, I know that there's a, the the Cabal cut, which uh, has not been released yet. Why I don't know. I wish they would release that version of the film. I hear it's a lot better than the one we got. Uh, why they haven't released that version yet, I have no fucking idea. But I would really love to see it. But as this film is as it is, uh, it's still really enjoyable for me, and I still really like it. Craig Schaefer or Schaefer uh, is the pretty much the hero of the film. Is the character Boom. Um, he's a lot of fun to watch. I like that actor. I enjoy seeing him. Uh, David Cronenberg is in this film. I like David Cronenberg. I'm a fan of David Cronenberg. He plays in the film as the character Decker. Uh, he like walks around wearing this fucked up mask and he's like, it's kind of like the, the humans in the film are the real monsters because the actual monsters don't even really kill anybody or don't kill anybody actually in the whole fucking movie. So it's like the humans are the actual monsters and the character David Cronenberg plays is actually the real killer in the film and the crimes get blamed on uh, the character of Boone. Uh, I just think this film had a lot of potential that was just kind of not used. It could have just been a lot more than what it was. Um, I feel like the character uh, of Decker is kind of like, uh, it's kind of, I feel like he's not fleshed out as well. Like his reasons for wanting to kill the Nightbreed in the film isn't, isn't fleshed out that well and can become quite confusing. Also, uh, also, this film just sets up a lot of mythology with the characters of the Nightbreed, and we never got a sequel to it, so it never pays off. We never get to learn more about them. So this film just feels like, it feels like, this film really does just feel like the first chapter in what should have been a franchise. That's why I think this film uh, is one film I wouldn't mind seeing redone, just because I think this film has a lot of potential. But that being said, though, the remake probably would turn out to be shit, just because remakes of today are just, all sh always, almost always turn out to be shit, but if they could get a really good script and a good director, I really do think that they could have a potential uh, money maker on their hands with this one. Now here with The Lost Boys, yet again another one of my obviously favorite vampire films. Uh, this film I really enjoy, I really like Keith Sutherland in this film, and uh, Jason Patrick in this film, and Corey Feldman and Corey Haim both in this film. Corey Haim, we miss you man, God rest your soul. Um, but Corey Haim, Corey Feldman in this film, they're fun to watch. And uh, Corey Feldman and the guy, I forgot the other actor's name who plays the, his brother in the film. The two frog brothers in this film are fun to watch as well. Um, I really enjoy this film. I hate Lost Boys 2. Lost Boys 3 is decent, but Lost Boys 2 is horrible. But I really enjoy this film, though, out of the three films. This film is just a blast to watch, and it's just got a really cool 80s vibe to it. Uh, the only problems with this film I can find is that it's a little bit too flashy sometimes and a little bit too uh, music video-ish. It's like more, it's a little bit too much style over substance a couple, a few times in the film. The script kind of suffers a little. Like the the whole love relationship between Keith or Sutherland uh, and the character of Star in the film is kind of like really underwritten and not done much with it at all. It's pretty much almost like, like almost uh, not even 
not like any of any consequence at all in the film. I mean, it's just kind of non-existent. Uh, but yeah, other than that, the film's suffering a little bit from some weak little script spots because it uh, because it's trying to be too stylish, I think, or or uh, paying too much attention to style at times. Uh, it's still a really cool film to watch, and the soundtrack to this film, with all the songs in the film, I mean the songs in the film, like the soundtrack to it, is fucking awesome. I love the soundtrack to this film. Uh, kicks ass. I love all I love all the songs in this film. They're just a blast for me to hear. And anybody who's watched this film. And is a big fan of it like me, knows that this film has like the coolest song ever. Cry, little sister. <laughs> Sorry, I had to burst it out, but everybody and everybody that's watched this film knows that that awesome song is in this film. But this film just kicks ass. I, lo I really love this film despite its little weak comings. It's not as good as the film Near Dark, but uh, it's still a lot of fun. I'm a fan of both this film and Near Dark, and Near Dark is the superior film to this one. But this film is still a lot of fun. Um, like with the vampires flying around and everything and all that shit, just like, uh, you don't see a lot of the vampires like flying, but when you do see it, it's done rather well for an older film. Um, any other little minor complaints about the film? The film gets a little bit too silly when it tries to like balance the tone between the adult story, the seriousness, and like the more comical, like Goonies part of the film when it's like the little kids versus the vampires. Um, but other than that, the comedy from the more goony style part of the film still holds up. Uh, uh, and I think that uh, despite the fact it gets a little bit too silly, that the lightheartedness of the of the f uh, second part of the film or the final of the film with the kids like uh, fighting against the vampires, I think that still holds up well combined with the more adult uh, rest of the movie. But yeah, this is a really good film. And I definitely recommend that people check it out, but uh, but a lot of films on here. Uh, I I mean, a lot of the films, of course, I have on my faves are horror films that are that are renowned as being good horror films. So I would say that most people have probably already seen this who are watching this video. But just in case you haven't, I definitely recommend that you do check this film out. I really don't think you'll be disappointed. And if you really like good music, I think you'll have a blast with this film. I mean, of course, if you don't like the music in the film, that's not to say your taste in music is bad, but I just don't think there's any way you won't really enjoy the rocking tunes in this film. Now to jump into one of the films I think that was an obvious inspiration for Scream. Uh, this uh, is Friday 13th, Jason Lives, which is without a doubt one of my favorite Friday 13th. I love this film. I get a kick out of this film. This is the film where they started, they decided to add humor into the mix and kind of poke fun at the genre and the franchise that's been established thus far with the all the films prior. They don't make fun of Jason and the comedy isn't over the top. Some of the comedy is a little silly in the film, like with the caretaker saying, do they think I'm a fart head and him looking towards the camera and it going to the, and it skipping to the little kids and him going, yeah. A little bit of that, a little, that's a little bit too lighthearted for me for a Jason film, but the film doesn't uh, skip on the blood. Uh, or the in or the really fun kills like the kills still feel intense like with the triple decapitation and shit. So the film doesn't feel uh, like too lighthearted. It does. This film does have a little bit more of a lighthearted quality to it, but it has an extremely fun quality to it that just makes it a blast to watch. Like with the incredibly fun soundtrack with Alice Cooper with He's Back, the Man Behind the Mask, which. Is is the iconic song for the Jason character and this entire franchise, in my opinion. Just sums up the, the entire franchise, pretty much. Um, and the character of Jason. Uh, but yeah, the Alice Cooper songs in this film rock. Uh, Teenage Frankenstein is another one. The scene where the Jason like causes the RV to like fucking flip over. And he like uh, busts out of it. And it's he's like standing on top of it while it's on fire. It's a truly iconic shot. This film uh, just... Uh, Feels like they were trying to accomplish more and do more with the Friday the 13th idea and with the Jason idea. Um, it just feels like they were doing something fresh with it. And even though it does get too lighthearted at times, it still makes up for it with intense, uh, with really intense kills um, and a good story, a good, a really good story and a fun story and fun characters. Tom Matthews from Return of the Living Dead is in this film, and I'm a fan of Tom Matthews. I like watching him act, and I enjoy watching him on films. Uh, he's just always a blast for me to see. Uh, and Jason in this film is played by C.J. Graham, and he kind of has like a soldier walk to him because C.J. Graham, I believe, used to be in the Marines or was a former Marine. I mean, 
And uh, he plays Jason really well in this film. Uh, and this film has the coolest opening of, uh, or, uh, in my opinion, the coolest opening, or at least our top two or top three coolest openings of the entire franchise, with the fucking zoom in on Jason's eye, and it's like James Bond style, and there's a little Jason in it, and he like hacks at it. He like hacks away at the screen, and then fucking blood like shoots out from the bottom of the screen. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, that opening alone is enough for me to place this film as like one of the coolest slasher films ever made. Uh, the film does add in comedy, but it never it never goes. I don't think uh, to parody mode. It never like uh, goes into just like making fun of the character of Jason and the Friday Thirteenth films. It just pokes fun at like the ideas of them. I think, but it doesn't so much. But it doesn't insult them. Is what I'm saying. Uh, it doesn't put them down. It doesn't make a joke out of them. But yeah, this is a really entertaining film, and I highly recommend this to any Friday the 13th fan if you haven't seen this film. If you really didn't like Part 5, I definitely recommend that you watch 6 because it is a vast improvement over the 5th film. Now to move on to Jeepers Creepers. This film, I really enjoy. I think this film is, is really fucking creepy and scary to watch. I really don't think this film has very many flaws. Just like the whole setup for it with just like a brother and sister driving down the road. Uh, heading somewhere and then running into like some kind of fucking crazy looking serial killer or you think it might be a serial killer but then you discover it's actually like maybe some type of demon um, but uh, just that idea it's just really you it's just a really cool idea and just like the the creature of the I mean the, the creature itself the creeper is a unique creature I like the design of him even though the, the design of him is clearly inspired like from the creature from the black lagoon it's just the way the, the creature in the film has to like the creeper himself has to eat body parts of other victims to like stay alive to like take the place of the body parts of his that have been damaged or weakened that way he can never die because it's kind of like he keeps rebuilding himself so uh, that right there is unique enough despite the look and I, I still like the look but he, but uh I mean that you know even though he looks like the creature from the Black Lagoon, what I'm saying is that with that idea, like where he has to eat body parts and stuff to stay alive, uh, to give himself kind of like a little quasi, you know, immortality state, uh, makes him different enough from the creature from the Black Lagoon and unique enough for my liking to where even though he resembles the creature from the Black Lagoon, he's nothing like it, which, uh, which is, uh, I, I think that idea is really cool. Just like the whole idea of him having to eat body parts and shit. The only thing I don't like about the creature is the fact that he has, like, he has wings. They discover in the film the creature has wings. And they're, they look, the wings are kind of weakish looking CGI when you see them. And the creature really didn't need that. The film was really creepy. And the character of the creeper is really creepy up until you see the wings. And it kind of makes him into more of, like, kind of just uh, a little bit too overly monsterish I would say that's just a little bit too much he doesn't really need the wings but all in all he's still really cool and like this film has really cool epic scenes in it uh, great imagery in the film like uh, when Justin Long is fucking like in this uh, underground place underneath a church and he's like looking up there and it's like a giant like a uh, cathedral I th looking place and it's got like all these bodies like uh like uh, stapled or, or uh, imposed on the walls, like everywhere, and it's just a really cool image. I highly recommend this film, and this film has like so many different versions of the song uh, or songs that involve the word Jeepers Creepers in it. That uh, it's fun just to watch for trivia of like how many of these songs can you name, or like who sings them and shit. But yeah, this is a really fun film and definitely really creepy. And it is one of the better horror films of the last recent uh, uh, decades that's came out. And I definitely recommend that you see it if you haven't already. I would also recommend that you check out the sequel. The sequel to this film loses the creep factor of the original film, but makes up for it with being uh, a pretty fun movie. Uh, it's more of just a straight up slasher film, but it's still fun. And just seeing the creeper back again is just fun to watch. This franchise, I'm really surprised, never really caught on for some reason, even though this character of the Creeper is really unique. Yeah, I would, I, I always thought that this should have been like a, a new major horror movie franchise, but it never really happened. We just got two movies for some reason. Why, I don't know. 
this franchise is really begging for a third film that I hope one day will be made. Now on to Jaws 2. Now a lot of people, uh, I think a lot of people are split on this sequel. I've heard a lot of people say they like it and a lot of other people say they don't like it. A lot of people dislike this film because it's not, I'll be just up front, it's not as good as the first film. And they don't like it because it goes into like more of a slasher type uh, vibe and style with the shark. The, but that is exactly, is, uh, is exactly the reason why I like this film. It would have been impossible to duplicate the original film. And even if you did, it would just seem like a copy. So I'm glad they went into a different style. It isn't as good as the first film, but I do think this film is still really enjoyable. They don't keep the shark hidden for as long, which would be kind of silly if they did. There's really no reason to. Uh, so they show the shark a lot more because after seeing the first film, we already know what the shark is going to look like. So there's really no reason to. I mean, there's not going to be much suspense to it. What they do instead is to make up for it is they let the shark get burnt. Uh, part of the shark gets burnt, and it starts to look, kind of look like Freddy Krueger as if he was like a shark. And that's what I like about the film. It's pretty much a slasher film with the shark. And uh, Roy Schneider uh, comes back in this film. Uh, I really like this film. I think it goes decently with the first film. Uh, the only kind of drawback to this film is I missed, I wish that Richard Dreyfuss would have came back in this film. I miss his character in this film. I wish he would have came back. Uh, but um, other than that, I really enjoy like the the shark stalking like the teenage victims and stuff. I just get uh, some fun out of it because it is like a slasher film with the shark. Uh, the I'll call it the Freddy Krueger shark with the Freddy Krueger shark as the as the killer. And it's just really funny and entertaining. You get a badass scene where he like pulls a helicopter like down and uh, like through. He like fucking like grabs a hold of a helicopter and pulls it down through the water. And at the end of it, he uh, he gets killed by. A uh, fucking Roy, uh, Roy Schneider uh, calls him to bite like a big uh, fucking electrical pole out in the water and electrocutes him. And that is just so entertaining. It's not as good as the first film or as well crafted, but it is a really fun sequel. Uh, and it, it's a really decent movie. And I think it's very enjoyable. It's certainly better than anything that's came after in this franchise. Jaws 3 and 4 are both other shit. Um, but 1 and 2, I think, definitely are worth watching, especially the first film, but if you watch any sequel, it should definitely be this one, because this is the only film other than the first one that, uh, that has any, um, that has any class to it. The third film just tries to be a gimmick with the 3D, um, and doesn't really, and it's like the old style 3D, and it comes out looking really shitty, and as for the fourth film, the less said about that one, the better. But uh, just for the first two films, I, can, I think you can watch both the first and second film back to back and have some fun with them. Uh, the only thing that hurts the second film really is that I just wish there would have been some more adult characters and instead of the film focusing more on the teenage uh, or the group of teenagers. But the teenagers we do get, they're fine. But I just wish that we would have got Richard Dreyfuss back in this film. But all in all, this is a really decent sequel, and I highly recommend it if you really enjoyed the first film. It's not as good as the first film or as well-crafted, but it does go in its own style, and it's fun for, for being a slasher film about a, a Fred shark, a Freddy Krueger shark. It is extremely fun, and I highly recommend it. I guess it's no surprise there would be another Bruce Campbell film on my list here, but I've always had a, a love for Maniac Cop, the first film. I even don't think the sequel's too bad. The third one is the the weakest of the three, but I haven't seen it in a long time, so I don't remember exactly how good or bad it is. But uh, as for the first film here, I really like this film. I like the way they work this film. With I like Tom Atkins being in this film as well, and I like the like silly idea of a killer cop, and hence the title Maniac Cop. <laughs> this is also directed by the same guy who directed Maniac, which is another great horror film, and I recommend that people check that one out as well. But just to focus on this film, this is a really fun B movie. Uh, it's a uh, it's just a fun idea. the The killer in the film is like a cop who was uh, sent to prison and was killed in prison. And now he's like we don't know if he's dead or alive, but he does seem supernatural in the film. But the film never really clarifies it. Just pretty much leaves it leaves it up to your imagination. But he's got like a really cut up face. I don't have any really problems with the movie. Uh, any major problems anyway. Uh, one thing I don't like is that you see the killer's face at the end. I really think it would have played better if you never really seen the killer's face. Maybe like one little up close glimpse. But that's about it. I think you just see his face a little bit too clearly at the end of the film. But other than that, I really don't have any gripes with this film. I really get a kick out of this little little film here. Uh, I really like that Tom Atkins and Bruce Campbell are both in the film and they both get to be the leads in the film. The film uh, for the first half is Tom Atkins as the lead. And then uh, for the final, uh, like, partway through the movie, it switches to Bruce Campbell being the lead. So I, I, that's just a fun idea for me. Uh, I mean, I think that's a fun idea, and I think it's a neat idea, and I, I really like it. 
And just like uh, the character, the, the fucking score in this film, it's like kind of like a little, uh, uh, like a uh, really creepy, like whistle, like blowing noise, I think is how you would say it. But uh, just like that score, uh, like that sound playing in the background is just really cool for this movie and definitely adds an extra awesome element to this film and makes it out to be really spooky in some scenes. But despite that fact, I don't really think this film is scary. Uh, it's just, uh, it's more just like uh, fun really I would say than it is really scary now it's by no means the best like horror B movie you'll ever see I don't even think it's in the top five I think it would probably be somewhere in the top 10 or top 11 but uh, I do think it's just really <laughs> a lot of fun though either way and it's just always cool to see Bruce Campbell in the movie doing his Bruce Campbell thing now here with the greatest killer shark movie of all fucking time baby Steven Spielberg's Jaws I love this film this is not only uh, one of my favorite horror films, but once again, this is one of my favorite films of all time. I just get a kick out of this film. Roy Schneider, uh, Robert Shaw, and Richard Dreyfuss are all three great in the film. Uh, this film just has a, a really uh, classy feel about it, just the way it's made to me. Like uh, with the uh, with the choice of not to show uh, the shark like all the time and keep it in suspense, and the suspense works works really well. Like with only like seeing bits and pieces of the shark, because it all feels like it's one big build up until the end, and I just feel like that's classy to me that Spielberg ch chose not to show the shark 24/7. And I know that one of the other reasons why he didn't show the shark all the time was actually because the mechanical rig didn't work too well, the, the shark didn't work too well, the mechanical shark didn't. So that's one thing that actually uh, that's a mishap for the movie that actually benefited the movie. But uh, the climax of this film with the the three main leads to uh, facing down the uh, big fucking great white is amazing. Uh, yes, uh, you can't shoot an air tank in a shark's mouth and have the shark actually blow up. Uh, at least according to Mythbusters anyway. And that actually makes sense to me that you wouldn't be able to. I picture the air tank would probably just like fly around inside. the go inside like the shark's body and like fly around inside of it. And maybe like uh, kill it from the inside actually. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe just fly out of its mouth. But either way, still, uh, getting the seeing the shark getting blown up at the end feels fitting for the film much more than uh, just like uh, the way it dies in the book, which I haven't read the book, but I know how it dies in the book. And for a movie ending, the exploding the shark just works way better. This film is just really great. Uh, this film also has like a uh, has like a, a tough quality to it. I mean, like the film doesn't try to pull punches on the fact that's a killer shark at a beach. I mean, uh, it plays it as if, like, the shark, you know, uh, is, like, really going to town on the people. Like, it even kills a little kid in the movie is what I'm saying. I'm, like, trying to say that this film has balls. Like, you know, the little kid even gets killed by the fucking shark in this film. This film is great. I love this film. Sadly, the reputation of this film, I think, is slightly tainted uh, by some of the, by the sequels. Not Jaws 2, but 3 and 4, I think, do tank this film. Uh, and make the, I think a lot of people, uh, like, younger people nowadays, like, who just see, like, this film and, like, the other sequels, they see them, like, grouped together, I think. People who haven't really watched just the first film by itself, or at least just the first and second film, and they kind of think of, oh, what, so uh, it's just, like, it's some, like, super shark that comes back in every movie, not even knowing that it's not even the same shark in every movie. I don't know, I've just heard some younger people act stupid and say stupid shit like that sometimes, but, uh, either way, this is still a terrific film, and I love this film. I love it to death. This is a masterpiece of a film. Uh, in my opinion, this is uh, the greatest uh, killer animal in water film ever made. Uh, and in my opinion, it will always be the greatest killer animal in water film ever made, unless something comes along to surpass it in the future. But uh, I just the, how good just because this film is so good, I honestly don't see that happening. But you never know. But just to conclude with Jaws here, this is a wonderful film, and it has a terrific score. That just everybody, everybody I've met that even hasn't seen the movie almost all knows the score to this film. And that's how iconic this film is. Um, this film will, uh, if you like to swim, I think this film will definitely make you rethink uh, going for a swim anytime soon at the beach. Now on to Near Dark. Um, I love this film. Um, once again, I think this film is better than the film Lost Boys. Uh, this film, it just the, the way this film is crafted, I really like. I really enjoy, like, the vampire western type feel to this film. And Bill Paxton is just fucking hilarious in this film. He's just so funny. Uh, he cracks me up. His character is the most fun one. Just the shit he says and the dialogue he has and, like, the, the how crazy he acts. 
like at the end of it, I love it when he's attacking uh, Caleb, who's like driving in a, a semi truck, and he's like on he's on the front of the fucking truck, and he's like looking at him. He's going, Caleb, fasten your fucking seatbelt, just <laughs> lines like that. Just Bill Paxton entertains the hell out of me in this film. He's a joy to watch. Lance Henriksen is also in this film. He's a terrific actor. He does good as the main vampire. Uh, just this whole film is fine. Uh, the love story in the film is also handled really well. I heard they were going to make a remake of this film, but I heard that the, they canceled the remake because Twilight was made, and the remake was going to be a similar story to Twilight, which, if this, if the remake of this film was going to be similar to Twilight, then thank God it was canceled. But, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I really like the love story in this film. The only thing that really weakens this film for me is, like, the whole idea of, like, a blood transfusion, like, curing, like, uh, vampirism. I'm not really sure how that works, and I don't really think it's completely explained. I do hear talk that one time back in the day that they wanted to do a sequel to this film. I really don't think this film needs a sequel, to be honest. I really don't. It would be cool to see a sequel, but this film just, the cast in this film is like perfect, and that's what helps just the, create the magic of this film. It's not just the script, the really good script, but it's just the magic of the cast as well. It's a joint effort of both. Uh, and I don't really know if you could recapture that that kind of same coolness with actors like Lance Henriksen and uh, Bill Paxton in this film. I just don't know if you could recapture that kind of coolness again in a sequel. But, you know, maybe if it was directed by the same person, you know, who the fuck knows. But as, as just this film by itself, this film is, is a terrific vampire masterpiece. I think it's one of the top ten best vampire films of all time. I love this film. I can't get enough of it. Uh, I watch this film uh, every couple of months. It's a blast to watch. Just all the characters, even the character of Homer, who's like uh, an old man trapped in a little boy's body, as he puts it all the time, uh, <laughs> because he was turned into a vampire at a young age. He's entertaining as well. Just all everybody in this film, all the actors do fine. This film is just really fun to watch, and I definitely recommend this to any fan, any person who is a lover of westerns or vampire films or both. I don't think you'll be disappointed uh, by uh, by either style in this 